Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Azure Every Day. I'm Christopher Furless over here, uh, Senior Principal Architect. And um, today I'm going to continue my discussion on HD Insight. Uh, so the exciting technology today is Kafka, which is gonna sound an awful lot like Storm, but we'll get into the nuts and bolts and you'll see the differences, okay? Um, but Kafka is basically an open source distributed stream uh, platform, right, that can be used to uh, build real-time streaming data pipelines and applications with a message broker functionality, right, and it's similar to that of like a message queue. Sounds a lot like Storm, but we'll get there, right? Uh, some of the specific uh, Kafka uh, enhancements or um, uh, improvements with HD Insight is that you get the 99.9% .9 uptime uh, from HD Insight. Uh, you get 16 terabyte managed disks, right, which increases the scale and reduces the number of required nodes for traditional Kafka clusters, which would have a limit of one terabyte. Um, Kafka takes a single rack view, but Azure is designed in two dimensions for update domains and fault domains. So Microsoft designed special tools to rebalance the, part the partitions and replicas. And then once you scale out, you would uh, repart repartition your data when you have a chance, and then you would be able to take advantage of the additional nodes, uh, as well as when you scale down. It allows you change. It allows you change the number of worker nodes uh, for scaling up and down, right? Depending on the workload required, and this can be done through the portal or PowerShell, you know, or through um, any, you know any of the automation tools within Azure. Um, and then it's got integration, direct integration with the Azure Log Analytics, uh, which looks at the virtual machine level information, like the disk and the network. Now, that's important because it allows you to roll that up into the Microsoft OMS suite for global log analytics, right? So when you're looking at all of your resources in Azure through OMS, it helps you to be able to see it at a high level and also drill in for more details. Um, a, a slight variation uh, from Storm is that the uh, Zookeeper manages the state of the cluster, right? Uh, Storm can manage it itself, but Zookeeper manages the state of the cluster which helps the concurrency, resiliency, and the low latency transactions, as well as the orchestration of the data through the nodes and the clusters, okay? Um, and then the records are stored in topics, which are produced by producers and consumed by consumers, right? So a little weird there, but the producers send records to Kafka brokers, and each worker node in the cluster is considered a broker, okay? So we have our, our nodes, which are brokers, right? And the brokers are what are helping the data move around inside of the clusters, okay? Uh, some, of the, some of the major differences, right? So again, they sound relatively similar, uh, Storm and Kafka do. Uh, in this case, uh, so Storm was invented by Twitter, Kafka was invented by LinkedIn. Obviously, these are all using the, H, the Hadoop uh, platform, right? And so, uh, it's, it's an open source, so they can build their own iterations. Um, Storm is more meant for real-time message processing, whereas Kafka is for distributed messaging processing. Uh, Storm is really, it can take data uh, from like Kafka and other database systems and process the data, whereas Kafka is really taking in those streams from things like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, right? Um, its primary use uh, for Storm is is streaming stream processing, whereas uh, for Kafka it's it's a message broker, right? Um, the data storage, right? So in Storm there is no data storage; you can only stream data through it. Whereas Kafka stores the data on the file system. Okay, um, and and as those streams are processed, Storm can do it. Uh, much faster, right? So they're doing it on a micro batch processing level, whereas Kafka is using kind of small batches. So they're larger than the micro. Um, and, you know, the dependency is that Storm doesn't depend on anything externally, whereas Kafka requires Zookeeper for, you know, all the orchestration. 
um, and Storm has the latency um, of milliseconds, whereas you know Kafka kind of depends on the source of the data, and you know it can take you know usually around slightly less than one to two seconds. Um, you know, so so really the the main takeaway is that you're you're keeping the data local in Kafka uh, and processing it and pushing it somewhere else, whereas with Storm you're kind of processing the data in motion as you're pushing it somewhere else. So, um, you know, two different ways of solving the same problem, uh, but, you know, really an interesting take on things. Uh, and apparently, it you know, it worked better for LinkedIn to design it this way as opposed to the way that Twitter handles their data. Uh, either way, really interesting use cases and uh, uh, pretty cool technology. So if you'd like to know more about Kafka, Storm, HD Insight, Microsoft Azure, any of the above, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to us, click the link below, and, and we're happy to answer any questions. Uh, thanks for taking the time to listen and have a great day.